Hey fellow tennis nerds, this video deals with the Pro Staff 90, famously used by the one and only Roger Federer. I think it deserved a classic racket review and I hope you do too. I have never tried this first edition of the Pro Staff 90 before, but I have played with all the others. The Encode, the K Factor, the BLX, the Amplifeel and now the Autograph that he's using uh, under various paint jobs. Uh, I can run through the different models briefly and say this, the Pro Staff Tour 90 plays the closest infield to the legendary Pro Staff 85 and if you're interested in that racket you can check out my review on this channel, it's also in the video about Sampras racket. Um, so I don't know which mold Fed ended up using, if it was a completely different layup or if it was based on the Pro Staff Tour 90, uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if it was based on this one because that has to closest feel to the Pro Staff 85 that he was using before. The Enco then was a bit more muted in feel and lighter to swing. The K Factor was heavy and stiff, offered good amount of power, a lot of people liked that one, I know that. The BLX was not a huge fan favorite though, a bit lighter, more muted. And the Amplifeel version, the white one that Federer won the 2012 Wimbledon title was again a bit raw, uh, which is uh, good in this sense, I think with a lower swing weight and it's more user-friendly uh, as a racket than the other ones were. They also increased the beam a little bit uh, upwards from the K-Factor, had an 18 millimeter beam, uh, so that uh, gave it a little bit more power than the Encode and the Pro, Ta Pro Staff Tour, which was 17 millimeter beam. Good to keep in mind uh, as we went through all that uh, history in a very short time. Uh, if you're a Federer fan, uh, I'm sure you've swung these frames. There are guys and girls who uh, adore Federer, who kind of um, collect these frames. They have them, as you can see in this picture here. And um, there are a lot of uh, a lot of Fed fans, as you know, and the frames play great, but they're not very easy to use. 90 square inches these days with a lot of topspin and polyester strings make it quite tricky to hit the sweet spot, very very tiny sweet spot. When you play well, it's an amazing frame and um, really enjoyable to play with. When you're not in your best shape and you're not on your best self on the tennis court, it will punish you pretty badly. I bought this frame used uh, and it was strung with a synthetic gut string, had been in the racket for years is my guess. I don't think the, the guy who I bought it from had used this frame in a long time had no time to restring it before my first session, so some of the footage here is with this old string. I actually prefer that one uh, with the old synthetic gut over the multi-filament poly hybrid I installed after this session. Uh, simply felt like this racket should be used with a full bed of natural gut or multi-filament or uh, just felt a bit better to me. Um, not sure if you, you all agree, but these kind of old school frames I don't like them so much with a poly, it just feels wrong somehow. It could be because I'm a, I'm a nerd or something else, but that's just my feeling. So Federer used this one, the paint job or the actual racket, not 100% sure, uh, this model at least. Uh, when he first won Wimbledon in 2003, um, razor thin 17mm beam, perimeter weighting system at 3 and 9, the Wilson standard and a braided graphite and Kevlar construction which uh, increases stiffness and stability and uh, this beautiful box beam design. Mine was a grip 2 so I added a half size shrink sleeve to get the size up to 2.5. At first I tried adding a full size to get it to a 3 which is my uh, usual racket grip size but then it came in at 367 grams and that's a bit much uh, so I removed it and put on a half size instead ended up then still with 360 grams, 31.4 centimeter balance and a 337 swing weight. So it's a lot of racket to play with. No matter what string you put in it, pretty much this racket is a dream to hit with. It won't forgive your sloppy footwork or lazy preparation, but if you bring your A game, the racket delivers. Uh, it's the best Tour 90 I've hit with. Uh, as I said, I've played with them all, except this one until now. And uh, really it has the best feel of them all, I think. And I'm a big fan, as you might know, of the Pro Staff 85. So that's perhaps why I like this one the best. So as long as you hit the sweet spot, you're gold with this frame. Uh, it almost made me want to call up Roger and say, why did you ever switch? Because this one is fantastic when you're, you're hitting you know, the, your forehand well. You can create some impressive angles with this frame. Great control, but some pop too. 
Um, I don't have Rogers numbers, so I couldn't call him sadly. Um, but on my weaker backhand wing, I struggle a bit more to find the sweet spot. It's definitely not easy. Uh, Roger is, of course, a true tennis black belt, and but I could still see why how how he would struggle against Rafa with his head size, with the ball jumping up, shoulder uh, level. It's pretty easy to shank the ball uh, at that kind of height, and uh, so you need to move around and protect your backhand. Then it provides surprising maneuverability. That's why I love the mids. You can still play great tennis with these mid-size frames. They're not that easy to use, but they're not that much harder to use than a 95 screen racket, for example, or even 97. So um, if you're not hit hitting against someone who hits with a massive topspin, I think you can still play with a mid and enjoy it. Uh, I, I, I really enjoy that maneuverability you get, even if the weight is higher. Uh, you still get that maneuverability from the smaller head size. So um, I'm a big fan of the mids. I played the, both the IG Prestige mid and the Pro Staff Tour 90 side by side. Both great, but in different ways. The Prestige is more controlled, softer in feel, while the Tour 90 is more powerful and raw, a little bit more spin friendly uh, from, from the pattern. But you can hit with topspin with both of these frames because you can actually get some good shape on your shots uh, thanks to the maneuverability of the frames. Uh, so I could definitely take this uh, beautiful racket into a tournament just for the fun of it. It would look like a brilliant idea if I was on a good day and a ridiculous idea if I was on a bad day. Shines a mirror on your tennis game, I would say. If you're Roger, you can win 16 slams with this one. But if you're a happy tennis nerd, you just have to appreciate the beauty of a real tool on the tennis court. So, beautiful frame, great to play with. Not something I will play with every day. I will keep it in my bag from time to time to just enjoy the, the hit. And mid-size frames are just really nice to play with. I do actually appreciate them, especially as a kind of training tool. Sometimes when I use a um, 100-square-inch racket, my technique kind of gets lost. Or I, I forget to kind of hit through the ball and go more for kind of flatter shots. I, it tends to just be too easy to, to play. This one forces you to focus in, move better, uh, and get in proper position. So I think as a training tool to have a mid-size frame, I mean, before I talked about wood frames uh, and the old woodies, but that might be taking it a bit too far. Then you can get um, a mid-size frame, have it as a training tool, just get your sweet spot dialed in. You don't need perhaps a wooden spoon and something uh, that's kind of very much extreme in terms of training. You just get a mid-size warm-up, play points, use that from time to time, and you will get your timing, I think, and your sweet spot control improved. So um, that's a small tip from a tennis nerd to others. That's all for this Pro Staff 9th review. I want to end it by saying big thanks for uh, to all of you for following Tennis Nerd. Uh, I've just hit 15,000 followers. It's not much if you compare it to other YouTubers, but it means a lot to me. And uh, I'm really happy you've been on this journey and I will keep working to bring you content that you like and you appreciate. And I appreciate all your nice comments uh, below. And also listen to you if you have ideas on other content you want to see uh, or things you just want to put across. That's, I, I read the comments, uh, keep that in mind. Uh, although I, can't, uh, have to, I don't have time to answer to all of them, but I'm, I'm trying my best. Uh, so big thanks, uh, it was a lot of fun, uh, I can maybe do a giveaway or something soon if you're interested, maybe a racket, uh, let, me, let me know in the comments below, and um, yeah, so really happy about that, please, uh, if you need help choosing a racket, check out my racket consultation at tennisnerd.net, and if you want more content from the Tennis Nerd, check out patreon.com slash tennis nerd, where you can become a Tennis Nerd member and get unique content every week for two bucks a month. That's all for this one. Have a nice day and don't forget to play some tennis.